Hello everybody, I'm Antonia and this is Noel and we are from Boxtail Soup Theatre Company and this is another box, oh dear, tail scoop. Didn't think about that did one, not did you? Think about I that one. About I really it. did not think about that one. We got a cup of coffee because we've just done a run of Northanger Abbey and I demanded a coffee and a snack before we did the vlog. <laughs> so I went to go and get that and uh, we're still drinking the coffee. But yeah, I didn't think about the actions. Oh well, never mind. If you are enjoying these vlogs, and our waffling, please do like, uh, subscribe if you want to, and or leave us a comment. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have always. Since we have been um, rehearsing Northanger Abbey this week in preparation for our Edinburgh Fringe performances on Monday and Tuesday of next week, we got to thinking about how we started out, because Northanger Abbey was our very, very first production. And so we thought that it might be interesting to do this week's vlog about just very generally about starting a theatre company. Well, actually not very generally, more specifically how we started our theatre company. But we hoped that there might be some elements of that which might help some of you if you are thinking about doing something similar or just interest you and in how we began. So I think it was back in 2011 mm -hmm. that we actually had kind of started talking about doing our own work, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, so we were both doing other jobs. Um, I was working as a street performer mainly in Covent Garden. Um, you were working, doing all sorts, yeah. doing all sorts, doing acting and doing you know other bits and pieces. And um, we talked, we talked occasionally, if, you know, in a very general sense about it. But then we started to get more specific. Then that was a point at which we started to talk about what we could do what our first produ production might be, what we would be interested in creating. And uh, we started to talk as well about who we would work with and, and exactly what that might look like. I think it's safe to say that both of us, probably even independently, even before we'd met, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, had thought that at some point we might like to make our own work. Yeah. And you were already doing it, really, doing your street theatre. That was your your show. Uh, you know, it's obviously a different beast because it's for the, uh, the street theatre rather than for the theatre, but nonetheless, it's a similar sort of thing, creating your own piece of work. And we both were interested in doing that. So as you say, we we started to decide, we started to talk more in earnest really, didn't we, about it. We were kind of like, I think I remember saying at the very beginning, when we were thinking about doing it, I remember saying, please let this not be one of those conversations that you have where you say, oh yeah, wouldn't that be cool? We'll make a piece of theatre and then you never do it. I was like, please let this be the one that we actually do. Mm. And I think, Oh, well, I think that's a crucial part yeah. of it, is the difference between those two things is huge. Mm. Because certainly for me, and I'm assuming and me, for you, and probably for uh, you know a lot of people in the creative industries, and I would assume, therefore, in other industries as well, yeah. people are, are often talk about these ideas and talk about these things you know, that they'd like to do, and they think, oh, you know, saying, oh, we'd like to, yeah, we should put on a show together, we should create something together. And uh, as lovely as it is to have those conversations, and sometimes you know some good ideas and things come out of them, it often, nine times out of ten, it comes to nothing. Whether that's because somebody else is busy, or somebody you know then decides to go and do something else, or yeah, I mean it's often through no fault of anyone's in that sense. It's, sure. it's the way, and I'm sure. But yes, I think our first piece of advice is, if you want to do something like that, if you're going to start, do it. Don't just talk about it, do it. I think, yeah, I mean, in that sense, it's the same as anything else. Uh, in my experience, again, you know, I would say for something like this, or for writing, or for painting or drawing, uh, and again, therefore, I assume for many other things, the most important thing about it is to start, because there is a huge difference between staring at that empty page mm. and having something on there to work with even if it's not very good it doesn't matter you know it's only your beginning it's only your first draft you can change it you can alter it you can work on it as much as you like but it's crucial that you get do started something. and do it yeah and it's safe to say when we first started to think about the company we there were more people involved than just us i think we talked to a couple of our best friends about it who were both in the creative industries too they were both performers and they were very interested in the whole idea. And uh, so the four of us sort of started to get to work on it. Obviously, the fact that Noel and I 
were a couple and at a time we're living together we spent more time together probably thinking about it and chatting over our dinner or our breakfast or whatever and therefore probably I think it's safe to say at the beginning we were maybe slightly more invested in it anyway because we'd sort of thought of the initial sure. idea yeah. but nonetheless there were four of us involved and uh, as always happens with these kinds of things the other two got great offers of other work and mm. therefore had to duck out of what we were doing but by that point we'd got to we got quite far along yeah. so the first conversation we had was what we might like to do and how we might like to do it and I had said that I was interested in doing adaptation of some sort and you had kind of agreed that that would be an interesting beginning mm -hmm. and I had always I'd read um well, I read a lot of Jane Austen anyway but I had Northanger Abbey had particularly stuck with me as something that was very I thought was innately theatrical so you had never read it and I spoke to you about it and said I think this is innately theatrical I think there are so many things in it that to me would make a brilliant characters on stage the dialogue is already written for you pretty much mm. you just need to cut it down and uh, and I had thought that puppetry might be interested for a couple of the characters because Yes. It felt like... So, I mean, that's also worth kind of just mentioning for a second is that in the beginning, the, the, the level of puppetry that we uh, ended up using and that we now use uh, and are so fond of wasn't really something we considered at the start. We considered one, hadn't yeah, we, I think. To begin with, we'd looked at things where we might have, for example, the general, uh, General Tilnig in Northanger Abbey, who's quite a larger-than-life character and um, appears only a few times... We thought that perhaps he could be a, a shadow puppet. We mm. thought that would be a, a nice device and a, a nice way to present this quite intimidating character. Um, but, as you say, the two other people ended up um, not being part of it in the beginning. Actually, we've worked with them both subsequently. You know, uh, they've, they've both worked with Boxtail Soup in other ways since then. But we had a moment then of... Um, a moment when we questioned whether it could go ahead or not. And out of that question, out of the, the question of whether we could do it with just two of us, we started then to think about... Oh, sorry, I keep gesturing behind me because all of the puppets from North Anger are behind us because we've been doing the run. We started to think about whether it could be done with more puppets and whether we could do it as two people but use puppets for the rest of the cast. So in fact, before we got to there, I was trying to slightly rewind a little further um, to when we were coming up with the idea of the company in the first place. So that is very much how Northanger developed and why we ended up with so many puppets. But the first ideas about the company were more to do with the fact that it was to do with your street show even, because Nolz is a street uh, show out of this little tiny leather suitcase and that's all he needed to do the show. And uh, I, I, we had had a conversation over pizza, I think, one evening where I'd said, well, what about, wouldn't it be interesting if you could do a, a full theatre production out of maybe a slightly larger item, a slightly larger suitcase. So we started with that also as a kind of principle. Yes. Once yeah. we decided we'd like to do an adaptation, we then talked about how we might like to Initially, do it. it was the idea of having one trunk or mm. piece of luggage or case that you could, you could work everything out of. So you could take the show anywhere, mm. put it down, and create this create a whole world out of that, you know, that one case. Mm. And we have stuck to that, I think, with, with subsequent shows to a degree, in varying degrees, but we sort of stuck with the, with the kind of principle of that. Yeah, well, it's interesting what the, the kind of practical aspects that you then take on artistically. Because obviously at the time, we, like we said, we were working in other jobs, so we had very little um, dedicated time. We were having to find time to sort of slot things in and do the writing and do the making and rehearsing around everything else to, to earn money and to... Know, keep keep going and uh, speaking of money we didn't have any so no. um, everything was very very limited in terms of what we could afford to spend on the show so we were looking for everything and anything we could use around the house these original puppets are made literally of stuff that we had lying about so there are old sheets in there there are bed valances there are toilet rolls there are pizza boxes there are some paper that we we happened, to, we happened have. to have it because uh, Noel, we had been doing street uh, performances in Edinburgh that year and had broken his wrist on one performance, so needed to find another trick. And we'd bought those rolls of paper to make a paper bag out of. Mm. So we happened to have them in the cupboard. And that's where their hair and their skin paper yeah. came from. So we did 
absolutely on a, on a shoestring budget. The eyes are buttons, spare buttons from some seat cushions that we had. Um, I think we had a budget of about £100, and mm. most of it was spent on the trunk that mm. we used for the show. And everything else, as you say, was just found objects, really, things that we just happened to have. And actually, I would say, again, if you're thinking of doing anything similar, you don't. it's a misconception, in my opinion, that you need lots of money to be able to make a show. You don't. And in some ways, I think the fact that we didn't have a large budget informed, informed the, what we made, and actually the charm of it was born out of yeah, that. Well, uh, necessity is truly the mother of invention. Mm. And uh, if you use what you have, then you only use what you have. You know, you, you make best, uh, you make the best of what you've got there to use. Mm. So I think then that, I mean, we, as you said earlier, we we started to adapt the, the novel. We'd adapted it for four people originally, as you said, reduced to two, added more puppets, made them out of what we had. And then we worked with a wonderful director, Robert Salisbury Smith, who we knew from having worked together with him before. Mm -hmm. And he helped us with the show and very kindly gave his time because he believed in what we were doing. And so it was, you know, and that's it at the beginning. It's sort of relying on the generosity of yourselves and others to try and get something started. And he spent, we spent uh, a week, we spent a lot of time together working on it. And then we spent a kind of dedicated week and a half, I think it was, and we were rehearsing in a shed and another shed, I feel like, mm -hmm. basically, because <laughs> that was the only space that we had. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then it was a case of trying to find anywhere that we could take the show and, and put it on. So again, we looked for uh, small festivals. We, you know, we didn't have any contacts really in that way. So we were just e emailing everywhere, trying to make lists of venues and places that we thought might be interested in the show. Um, it's fortunate now, obviously that's much easier because it's easier to, to Google those things and to research those things than it might have been a few years ago. Um, and uh, we were fortunate that a few places were interested in a, and we had a few nice venues in the beginning and a few helpful people who saw the show. Yes, and who really enjoyed it. I mean, we put the show on in a school theatre to begin with um, and, you know, invited invited audience, didn't we, to give us feedback to try and understand what they thought of the show, mm -hmm. whether it worked. Because you make these things and you make them in a relative vacuum. You don't know whether they're going to work when you put them in front of an audience. And I think that was probably the ner most nervous I've ever been in my life. Yes, that's true. Yeah, we had no idea how it would go down and whether Jane Austen with puppets was a thing that people would be into. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a very unusual thing to suggest to do. Yeah. And so I think that, that, in a sense, comes to the other really major point about it, which mm. is that if you're going to do something um, and you want to make something, make sure it's something that you're excited about. Absolutely. Um, I think that's what kept us going, was above all else, when even when we were coming home from work and, you know, you'd had a whole day at work and then you've got to come home and try and get some more of this stuff done. What drives you then, it, it, it has to be something that you care about, it has to be something that you are excited about. And uh, the more it developed, the more excited we got, I think. Yeah, I think you have to drive it with, with a lot of, of passion. Because at the, at the beginning, you're not going to be, it's not going to earn you any money. You're going to have to be doing it, very likely anyway, in your, in your spare time, as you say. You know, and, it, and then you have to kind of keep doing it like that, keep weaving it into your life until eventually, hopefully, you can make some kind of success of it and, and, and be able to. I mean, now we, we feel incredibly fortunate that it has mm. now become our full-time job, but it took a long time for us to get to that, that mm. place. And I think the, the one other thing that I would say is, uh, I don't know whether you would agree with this, but you, at some stage also, you have to put the work out there and be unapologetic about it. Yeah. So I think the other important thing about starting the company and getting us off the ground in the first place was the decision that we'd made that yes, this is a company. Uh, you know, we weren't going to. Uh, there's that thing of imposter syndrome or feeling like you don't quite know what you're doing, which of course you don't. Especially for us, given that we were using puppetry in the way that we were, and although we'd had some experience with it, it's not like we were expert puppeteers when we started out no absolutely and you know you can be perfectionist about it to a certain extent you can 
you can try and make everything look as beautiful and as, as you know as ready as it possibly can but at some stage you've got to kind of put it out there and share it with other people and say right this is what I've made and mm. this is our stuff we are this company and see what they think you know you uh, you can't hide it away and keep working on it forever and nor can you uh, nor can you I don't know the, the the idea that you are um apologetic about it or that you are in some way yeah in that it's that sense of sort of going oh is this okay oh sure yeah you know, exactly you have to, you have to be bold have to find, yeah, yeah be, pr be proud and if you don't because if you don't believe in it then actually your audience will never believe in it but i think i think we've definitely learned that you, if you have courage in what you're doing and you say you say this is this is us this is our show mm. it, we love it we hope you will and not everyone's going to love it but then you're much more likely that an audience picks up on that i think mm. incredibly quickly Absolutely. if you're if you're not if you proud believe, and comfortable yeah, of what you're, very, what you're doing true. you get that horrible sort of awkwardness and, and that's uh, that's a disaster waiting to happen yeah absolutely so yeah that was how it all began so it's a pleasure now to return to it mm -hmm. um it's been fun over the last few days to just do the show again to run it again you know it's such a fun show to do and it has such a special place uh, in our hearts so we've lost we've lost, lost a line, line there um and we've now got we've now got a couple of days before we go up and do it in edinburgh and uh, hopefully we'll have plenty of people to share it with up there so thank you very much for watching again uh sorry it was probably a little bit random but hopefully you'll have found some interesting things out about how we how we started out if you have any questions or you'd like to know more about the minutiae of starting out as a theatre company then please do pop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them and as i said earlier if you haven't enjoyed the vlogs please do like uh subscribe or and leave us a comment and we will see you again uh, next week